Hi, Gary Steerman. It is a Tuesday, and we've gotten a lot of email in response to an article that I wrote and then uh, to some discussions we had last week uh, on these news updates uh, with regard to an article, Does Biblical Prophecy Actually Point to an Islamic Antichrist? Uh, this headlines the April 2012 edition of Prophecy in the News, and uh, as you know by now, my response to this question is no, it does not. In fact, Daniel the prophet is very, very definitive in pointing out that the uh, Antichrist will be descended from the people of Rome, the very people who destroyed the temple. And just to review a little bit, Daniel 9, 26 and 27 talks about a prince that shall come. Now this prince is virtually universally identified as the Antichrist of the latter days. And so, and Daniel writes this, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Well, we've already talked at length about this. The people of the prince, that is his forebearers, the forebearers of the Antichrist, were the ones who destroyed the temple. That happens to be the Flavian dynasty uh, outlined by uh, Vespasian, his son Titus, and later on the emperor Domitian, the greatest persecutor of Christians who ever lived. So <clears throat> the Romans form the headwaters of the dynasty of the Antichrist. And then as you go down to Daniel 9, 27, it says, and he, meaning this prince who shall come, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. It's a seven-year covenant, and it is the signing or confirmation of that covenant that begins the tribulation period. Well, we talked about all this, and we've gotten some reaction to it. Uh, we basically insist that the Antichrist will come out of the bloodline of the Greco-Roman Seleucid dynasty and the Flavian dynasty. And that dynasty dissolved into uh, the, the heads or chiefs of various European kingdoms down through the ages and has emerged in the latter days uh, in the dynasties of the leaderships of the West. So the, uh, the contention here is that the Antichrist will come out of the Western alliance and not out of Islam, which is currently being insisted by some. There are several books now being uh, circulated that uh, operate on the thesis that the Antichrist will indeed be Islamic. Well, we got an interesting uh, email, and by the way, I'm reading this because it's one of several that have expressed the same thought. Now, I figure it's important enough, enough people have responded to it that, uh, that I would uh, kind of add another note of explanation. This is from Kent T., and he writes, Dear Gary and Bob, saw your Friday the 13th news update, <clears throat> and he said, I want to remind you of something, and I'm quoting here. First of all, when you ask, is the Antichrist going to be a Muslim, you're really asking what his religion is going to be. To answer this question, say he'll be a Roman, does not answer this question. Is being a Roman his nationality, or could we ask from which current nation included in the old Roman Empire he will come from? But I believe there are very good chances he comes from Greece, as given in Daniel 8, 18 and following. But anyway, he continues, uh, could a Grecian or Roman or any European Antichrist be a Muslim today? He says, probably, but could the Antichrist be Muslim? The very question, of course, we've been asking all along. And then he says, very doubtful, because Daniel 11.38 says that he'll honor the god of fortresses. So uh, we have here from Ken T., I think a very uh, thoughtful note. Namely, when you say that the Antichrist will be descended from Roman stock, you're not necessarily excluding the fact that he could be Islamic in his religion. In other words, he could be a Roman descendant, but a practitioner of Islam? Uh, I don't think so, <clears throat> for two reasons. Number one, if you go to Ezekiel 38, the invading armies, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, in other words, all the Islamic 
uh, nations that come against Israel in Ezekiel 38 are flatly destroyed. Islam is destroyed uh, to the point that the Isra Israelis, that is the modern Israeli army, is shown cleaning up the dead for seven months and cleaning up the weapons of the invader for seven years. The invader has been completely defeated, and the invader, of course, is Islam. Now, it's my contention that a, a an Islamic chief could not rise from this uh, stack of dead bodies to become the Antichrist. But also, <clears throat> there is a note in Daniel. Daniel chapter uh, 11 outlines the bloodline of the Antichrist, beginning with Alexander the Great, his general Seleucus, and the Seleucid dynasty, coming down to Antiochus IV Epiphanes, and coming down from Antiochus IV Epiphanes to the time of Christ, and then moving into the future. From there, an unbroken Seleucid dynasty. And in <clears throat> Daniel eleven thirty six, and by the way, this is for you, Ken, because I, I, I tend to agree with what you're saying, but I want to emphasize it a little bit. Uh, the willful king, which is... Uh, another name for the Antichrist in Daniel eleven thirty six, 36, and the king shall do according to his will. He shall exalt himself, magnify himself above every god, and speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall, shall prosper until the indignation be accomplished, for that which is determined shall be done. And very briefly, what we have here is the Antichrist rising to proclaim himself God, as in the New Testament, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, says that he will stand up in the temple and announce that he is a God, or the very God of Israel. And apparently he'll be accepted as that God. But Daniel here says that he is going to stand up and prosper until the indignation be accomplished. The indignation, of course, being the seven-year uh, tribulation. But here's the fascinating thing. Back to the question, will the Antichrist be a Muslim? Verse 37 says, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. So this Antichrist does not stand up in the name of any god, but rather he proclaims himself to be God. Now, there is no indication that he pronounces himself to be Allah at all. In fact, what uh, the Scripture clearly says is he stands up in, not in the name of any previously existing god, but he stands up in his own name, which exactly... Uh, reflects the thought in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 where Paul writes that he's going to stand up as God in the holy place. I know this is very difficult to conceive of. I, I personally find it difficult to imagine a man standing up and saying that he is God and having the world believe it. But that's what Scripture says. Verse 38 of Daniel 11 says, But in his estate... Uh, shall he honor the god of for forces or the god of fortresses and a god whom his fathers knew not? Shall he honor with gold and silver, precious stones and pleasant things? Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange god whom he, sh he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. This god or power out of which the Antichrist arises is not any God known today. He's certainly not Allah. He doesn't stand up in the name of Allah. He stands up in his own name and proclaims himself to be God. And somehow the people of Israel who are alive in that day, at least for a little while, acknowledge him as God, meaning that they, in their minds, think of him as God. But later on, and of course we read this in the New Testament, their eyes are open and they, just, they, uh, they come to the realization that this is not God at all. This is an evil man empowered by uh, the devil. And so, uh, Ken, thanks for your letter. I generally agree with you, and I, if, I think you have, in fact, augmented the position that we have taken. Uh, we're not talking about nationality here. 
when we say that a man comes down to us via a Roman bloodline, we're talking about a whole mindset, uh, the Greco-Roman mindset. And, and to get into that in depth, you're looking at God's coming down from heaven and walking on planet Earth. And I think the Antichrist is going to present himself in that way. We'll be thinking about this in days to come, no doubt. It's a very complex question, and we do appreciate your emails, your responses, uh, as we study Scripture and attempt to understand it in greater depth. We appreciate your responses. Gary Stearman, of course, we're always watching. These are critical days in which we live. Thanks for all of your support for us here at Prophecy in the News and keep looking up.